Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about the 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You definitely know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all over social media, including our own YouTube channel. But in this video, we'll be looking at some of the lesser known builds today. We'll start things off with Corky Top. For one reason or another, Corky has been a really unpopular this season, and when he's played, he actually does pretty well, sitting around 52 and 53% win rate in the mid lane. That may come as a surprise, but you actually think a squishy scaling marksman would be just smashed by all the bursty assassins in the lane, but his range and the escape from Valkyrie makes him a really safe, consistent pick. And all of that makes him even better in the top lane. While Corky may not be quite as much of a bully in the early game as other ranged top laners like Quinn or Vayne, he makes it up by being much, much safer. You go for short bursty trades with the Q and auto attack here and there when you can, but you don't try too hard to force it. As a scaling pick, your main priority is to farm up in the laning phase and become OP later. If you're using your W aggressively in lane, you're leaving yourself wide open to jungle gank, so it's not really worth the risk or the damage. Something else that sets Corky apart from the other ranged top laners is his damage profile. While other marksmen can easily bully the early laning phase, they quickly get outscaled by tanks, bruisers, and juggernauts that abuse steel caps and bramble vests against them. Corky doesn't really have this weakness. He's mostly magic damage and tanky MR items just aren't nearly as OP, since they don't really give as much damage and grievous on top of their damage reduction. He also has insanely strong wave clear, and all of it can be done from high range with his Q and R alone so you can actually just instantly nuke the minions even when a big wave is being pushed in. It may seem minor, but this can be a huge factor in top lane success as it can prevent turret dives. As the game goes on, there's one more thing that Corky provides that other marksmen don't. His ginormous package. And you know, this can be an insanely huge asset in team fights. The other solo lane ADCs have their worth measured by how fed they are alone. If they are strong, they do damage and they are useful. If they are weak, they're practically useless. But with Corky, Package can be used as an engage tool, disruption in a fight, or just as a safety net since he goes unstoppable when you use it. You can even use it to go assassinate other squishies farming in the side lanes. So what's the build for Corky Top? For your runes, you'll want to run Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery, with the set runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resistance. For your item, start with the Doran's Blade, and then pick up a Terra of Goddess on one of your early recalls. Then build into Immortal Shield Bow, Sorcerer's Shoes, and Mana Mune. After that, you'll grab Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge, and top off the build with either Void Staff, Rapid Fire Cannon, or Bloodthirster. Part of what makes Sleeper OP picks so successful is the fact that nobody plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as the most popular picks, but when your opponents don't really know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't quite enough to win you all of your solo queue games. You also need to have the skills necessary to get those early leads and know how to use those leads to win your games. And that's exactly what we try to teach you over at ProGuides.com. We're offering hundreds of courses from top pros like Core JJ, Doublelift, and so much more. If you aren't interested in the courses, our selection of high elo coaches are here for you 24-7. No matter what your goal is, ProGuides can definitely help you out. Unless your goal is to get a girlfriend, because <laughs> we're not going to get that play in league, right? Anyway, let's get back into the video. Our next entry is Amumu Support. Honestly, with how OP this has been, I'm surprised that we have to include it in this video. It's caught on over in High Elo Korea, but globally, most people are just abusing the Mumu changes in the jungle. But as a support, he's even more insane. The change that has given him two charges of bandage toss has made him the best kill lane support in the game at the very moment. Once you hit 6, your QRQ combo gives you insane lockdown. And if your lane partner has any CC of their own to layer onto it, it's just death with little to no counterplay. There's no clear-cut best champs to pair with this, but with winning lanes via kills, you'll just want somebody aggressive like Ash, Draven, or Tristana. It also pairs well with mages, who usually have high burst at level 6. Ziggs in particular goes well with this, and you may not think of him as an aggressive pick, but when targets can't dodge his bombs, he can easily nuke down anybody. Going for an aggro kill lane is definitely preferred, but it's not the only way that he works. With all of that CC, Mumu has a ton of peel for hyper carries. On top of all the CC that he provides, Amumu's passive, Cursed Touch, also gives a nice boost to damage from allied magic dealers. That, in addition to picking up Abyssal Mask as an optional Zeke's makes him one of, if not the absolute best setup supports in the game. The only thing that you have to worry about is his ultimate long cooldown, and when it's down, Amumu isn't all that useful aside from making single target picks with his Q. Coordinate with your team to make sure that you're getting the most out of each ult cast, and make sure that you have it up for dragon fights. Now for the builds. For runes, you'll want to run Aftershock, Fawn of Life, Second Wind, Unflinching or Overgrowth, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight, with the stat runes being Adaptive Force, Armor, and Magic Resist. For your items, start Relic Shield and then rush either Lucidity Boots or one of the tankier boot options. For your Mythic, either Solari or Sunfire are your general go-tos, but if you really need the Engage Power, Turbo Chem Tank works as well. 
After that, go for Abyssal Mask, Watch Zone, and either Zeke's Convergence, Knight's Vow, or Stone Plate. As a quick note, don't be one of the people that go the Everfrost build. It may seem pretty cool, but in reality, it's pretty bad, and anybody that tries to sell it to you is kind of clueless. Our next pick is Karma Top. For whatever reason, one of the most anti-fun champs in the game is being buffed this patch, and we're pretty sure toppling Karma is going to be by far her best role. She's a huge lane bully, with the ability to easily poke out almost any melee top laner. The annoying thing about dealing with Karma is that you pretty much can never trade back. Her E's shield and movement speed makes it so difficult to ever land any blows, and if you can get on her, her Mantra W just heals up the damage that you do. She's also very flexible in itemization, so she can go ahead and change her build style to deal with different opponents. Against squishier carry top laners, Ludens and Sorcerer Shoes may be ideal core. This way you can smash him in lane and keep him from ever getting into the game. Then, against a Juggernaut or a Tank, it may be the best idea to go for Leandries and Lucidity Boots for good poke, but a focus on second up ability haste to be useful in teamfights. And of course, we have everybody's favorite style of Karma, where you build tanky items like Frozen Heart and Spirit Visage to basically be a bruiser that takes very, very little damage while constantly healing up with your Mantra Ws. In general, the second option is the go-to, so that's the one that we'll be covering today. For the runes who want to run Airy, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Shield Bash, and Revitalize with the stat runes being Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and HP. For your items, your core is Leandry's Anguish, Lucidity Boots, and Cosmic Drive. That gives you a ton of Ability Haste so you can keep spamming your Mantra E's in teamfights. Your last three items are situational. You can go shield buffing items like Ardent, Staff, and Chemtic Putrefire, or go for AP with Rabidons. Mikhail's is also a good option if the enemy comp has some deadly catch. One thing to know about Karma Top is that it doesn't just fit into every single team comp. If you don't have a tanky ally to engage and frontline in team fights, you won't really have a 5v5 to support. So don't just go blind picking this every single game. Up next, we have Pike Mid. Pike Mid used to be a pretty OP thing. He had no real losing lanes, with his passive giving him infinite sustain, and his realms were quite devastating. It felt pretty frustrating to play against, so Riot nerfed it hard specifically hitting this passive so he gets less of regeneration if there aren't at least two enemies nearby. But that hasn't been quite enough to keep him down, and he's performing super well as a solo laner once again. There are a few factors that come to play for that. For one, while they did nerf his sustain pretty hard, you don't really have to take a beating as Pike. Most mid laners aren't rage control mages anymore, so you're not dealing with poke. Instead, it's almost all melee champions. And Pike is really good at trading against these guys. He has really cheesy damage and can easily go in for a QE combo at level 2. Sometimes you can even see Pike get kills at level 1 with his E if the opponent isn't respecting his potential. On top of his cheesy kill potential in lane, Pike is just really good for roaming and affecting the rest of the map. He's pretty much always the first one in the jungle skirmish, and post 6, a double kill in the bot lane with his ultimate is a huge boost to his team's gold. Here's the build if you're interested in trying out this unorthodox assassin out, who's apparently a quote unquote support. Come on, man, right? Just remove this champion from the game. It doesn't matter. Anyway, here are your runes. You want to run Hail of Blades, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Triumph, and Tenacity with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resistance. For your items, you start with Adorance Blade, and then go into Dusk Blade, Lucidity Boots, and a Yumu's Ghost Blade. After that, go for Edge of Night, Death's Dance, and either Umbral Glaive or Guardian Angel. Supports being OP solo laners isn't exactly new. I can still remember years back when Randuin's Omen Rush Soraka top was the most broken thing in the game. Meta picks are always going to be strong, but I think it's the sleeper OP picks that come way out of the left field that are always the most broken things in League of Legends. The mix of being good and unexpected just makes them very difficult to deal with. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What do you think is the most OP off meta or sleeper pick? It could be something right now or something from the past. Either way, let us know your answers down in the comments below. Finishing off our list, we have a sleeper OP bot lane duo in Tarek and Tristana. Usually we cover single picks, but sometimes it's fun to include something that you can do with a friend, if you have any. Because <laughs> I sure as hell don't. Anyway, this is my all-time personal favorite lane. It's super cheesy, and there's pretty much no counterplay for your opponents. Whenever I see this being played as a duo, they start every game by chasing the lane, with Tarek starting his E and Tristana starting the W. This almost always results in a kill. Tristana E may be more damage if you stack it up, but if the enemy flashes away, that's not happening. Her jump is a way to keep a better aggressive option, since it allows you to follow their flash and applies a slow to keep them in your auto range. But this lane isn't just OP because of some cheesy level 1 play. Lots of lanes can do that. What really makes it broken is how well Tristana works as a delivery system for Taric's stun anytime after level 2, which sets her up to land all of her bursts with ease. 
It works pretty similar to Taric and Master Yi, but even better since Trisana's jump slows. You can put Taric's Bastion on Trisana, she jumps in on a squishy target, and the slow makes it impossible to miss E. With this being such an aggressive lane, you're sure to make the enemy bot lane flash pretty early, and once they're down, any mobile champion basically just dies every single time they leave their tower. As the game goes on, this by no means falls off. In fact, it works better than any other kill lane support that gets paired with Trisana because Taric doesn't have to worry about keeping up with Trisana as she jumps all over the place. Just use her as the focal point of your spells and keep autoing the nearest target for your passive to reset your cooldowns. Another good bit of synergy is Taric's ultimate. It sets Trisana up to jump into the fight, blow up a squishy target, and then back out before the invulnerability wears off. Now, let's look at the builds for both champions in this lane. For Taric's runes, run either Guardian or Aftershock, Font of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Presence of Mind, and Alacrity or Tenacity, with the stat runes being Attack Speed and Double Armor. For his items, start Relic Shield and then build Lucidity Boots, Locket of Iron Solari, and Zeke's Convergence. After that, you want to grab Wardstone, and either Redemption, Knight's Vow, or Frozen Heart. For Tristana's runes, run Hail of Blade, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Alacrity, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For her items, start Doran's Blade, and then build Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Grief, Storm Razor, and Infinity Edge. After that, you'll want Lord Dominic's Regards, and then Bloodthirster. And that wraps things up for our sleeper builds that you're missing out on patch 11.18. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guide, so that way you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember, let us know what you think is the most OP off-meta pick down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, we can go ahead and discuss the leak further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.